Hello? Sound good? I can only see myself here. I hope you guys are on. Power dressing. See, this is a very unique thing for a demand who won't be successful. You want to grow up in life. When you go into certain level, you know, you need to have that power look. Sri Lanka's score of 338 for 6 was imposing. I really thought it was imposing. And this is what everyone expected Sri Lanka to do. One of the issues, I'm sure you understand, is that Sri Lanka could not do this in the World Cup. Look at the other games. Sergio with Troy Pista injured in police shooting. A suspect who entered a finance firm in the Horana town was hospitalized when police fired at him early yesterday morning. Okay, so today on Song Stories, we're going to be talking about this great song by Bruce Springsteen. It's called Glory Days. Pod Hub, whenever, wherever. Hi, this is Sham and welcome to my pod according to Sham. We'll be reviewing the latest in the movie world, the good, the bad and the ugly. Mom on the run as I document my journey of being a new mom. We are going to explore into every part of Colombo to collect all those mysterious history, all the news and insight that you need on the game you love. Only on Podhub. Right here on Podhub. On Podhub. Only on Podhub. Here on Podhub. And welcome to Sit Back with Shaq. It's of course a, a, another Tuesday evening. It's the 21st of April, and uh, like we've done it before, uh, it's a show that we're going to be talking to celebrities, personalities, corporate leaders, and of course individuals talking about uh, topics that are trending in Sri Lanka right now. We've got a very interesting personality, and I don't think we really need too much as far as an introduction is concerned. We're going to speak to him in just a bit. We'll be back right right after as we kick start sit back with Shaq on the 21st of April right after this power dressing see this is a very unique thing for a demand who won't be successful you want to grow up in life when you go into certain level, you know, you need to have that power look. Sri Lanka's score of 338 for 6 was imposing. I really thought it was imposing. And this is what everyone expected Sri Lanka to do. One of the issues, I'm sure you understand, is that Sri Lanka could not do this in the World Cup. Look at the other games. Sergio with Troy Pista injured in police shooting. A suspect who entered a finance firm in the Horana town was hospitalized when police fired at him early yesterday morning. 
Okay, so today on Song Stories, we're going to be talking about this great song by Bruce Springsteen. It's called Glory Days. Podhub, whenever, wherever. Welcome back to Sit Back. I almost forgot my glasses, so I just had to make sure that I see everybody uh, properly and make sure that I see the questions also at the same time. Um, it's the 21st of April, and um, one year ago today, uh, something devastating that actually happened to us right here in Sri Lanka. It was Easter Sunday, 2019, and uh, it is something that actually shook the entire world, a cowardly act that uh, pretty much brought Sri Lanka to its knees. It's something that we will never ever forget in our lives. It was just way too much in terms of a destruction and uh, everybody obviously rallied together at that point, banded together and make sure that we try and get back as fast as possible. However, the 21st of April will always be etched in our minds as a black mark day. In respect of the hundreds of innocent lives that were sadly taken away on that day. Before we start the show, we have a minute silence for the individuals, sadly, who are not with us anymore, and may their souls rest in peace. Thank you very much and uh, welcome back to Sit Back with Shaq right here on a Tuesday evening coming to you live on the Facebook page of PodHub. Now today we've got a very interesting uh, individual, I've known him for many, many years and uh, it's just a wealth of knowledge honestly and uh, it's my privilege and it's an honor to actually introduce Sarinda Unambua, CEO of MAS Creda who is actually joining us right now. Good evening Sarinda. Good evening, Shaq. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, not the best of days for me. Um, last year, this time, was a big shock to all mm -hmm. of us. And today has been a reminder of how that felt. You know, it kind of brings back all those bad memories of not just last year, but uh, you know, the 83 riots that I was very much, you know, I was a teenager at that time. And remember very well. Um, so yeah, tough day, but uh, you know it is what it is. We've got to move on. Yep, one year of course, and uh, like I just said, it's going to be a day that uh, will be etched in our memories as long as we live. Uh, again, yeah. something unprecedented as far as the country is concerned. Something else that we're going through right now. That's what we're going to be talking about. Something very unprecedented. But uh, honestly, how are you coping up with this lockdown? It's all smiles. A lot of whiskey. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's been a tough one, uh, Shaq. You know, it's been something that uh, I think the last time I was on the show, we were talking about black swan events. And this was, I mean, if there ever was a black swan, this was the blackest of black swans ever. Um, and it's something that the world never anticipated. None of us anticipated. So it's been a bit of a shock. But it's been a couple of months now since it started and it's uh, also given us time to digest the magnitude of this impact, the effect, um, what we are going to face, what we are facing on a daily basis, how it's changing on a daily basis, how the globe is, uh, the world is coping. And 
Yeah, so it's been, uh, it started off as being a shocker. I think I went through all the different stages of grief uh, and finally got, came to terms with it. And now we've got to just get up and get on with it. Yeah, and you deal know, with it the best we can. Sorry, and experts are actually calling this the biggest reset of the world. And uh, then you have some who say we cannot necessarily go back to the lives that we led before this pandemic took over the world. But both are correct in some way. But uh, this, I mean, a reset means sort of a fresh start. You can't necessarily go back to starting afresh from where you were before this whole lockdown and the pandemic actually happened. What's, what's your view on that? I think yes, calling it a reset is not a uh, is not something irrational. Uh, it definitely has been because if you think of all the other things that have happened to us in the last say 10 to 15 years, most of them have been either localized or they have been uh, uh, of short term duration. For example, the other thing that happened uh, in 2008 2009 was the financial crisis. Uh, that was something that impacted a fair amount of. Uh, countries and companies around the uh, around the world uh, but this has absolutely no business i mean this has this has taken the entire world and turned it on its head uh, some countries are dealing with it um, in a very professional very pragmatic very scientific manner some countries and some of the most developed countries in the world are dealing with it like a bunch of imbeciles uh, <laughs> so you've got uh, the two different spectrums here um, but what it's done is it's polarized the planet. It's just made two completely different camps here. Uh, but it's also made us look at things very, very differently. Um, as for us not getting back to life as it were, or as, as we used to enjoy it, I don't know whether that's going to happen. Because what I feel is this is going to run its course. It's, it'll run its course. And then sadly, what will happen is we'll forget about it. And we'll right. move on and then we get back to exactly where we were before. There are going to be some casualties as a result of this. Industries are going to change. The way we work is going to change. So some things are going to change. But the things that I really hope change the most are things like the way we treat the planet, the way we, um, the, the way we pollute, uh, the kind of emissions that we have been putting out into the planet and in the impacts on things like global warming, uh, the impacts on conservation, what we do with um, you know all those things. I'm hoping that this would be a, a, a moment of checking all those things and having some kind of rational um, resetting, if that was the word to use, uh, following following this COVID outbreak. Now, most corporates who were pretty much hesitant to jump on the digital bandwagon before this are now forced to actually jump on it. Individuals who, who decided that no, they can still carry on without this whole digital infrastructure change have pretty much pushed themselves or have been pushed to actually jump on this bandwagon. Now, how will the transformation help for like traditional business minded people? Will they be left behind when you've got the others who have actually already started ahead of them when right now they need to learn the ropes because they've been pushed to it? It's not out of choice. Absolutely. And I think there are lots of companies and lots of individuals um, that are going to have to make quick adjustment to live in this new world. Um, for example, the company that I work for, we introduced a, a work from home policy about two years ago. And it took about a year and a half or maybe about a year where people started believing that this could actually work. But there was a lot of reservation from some of the, uh, some of the leaders of teams saying, how do you know people are going to be working? Uh, you know, you don't know whether these guys are going to be focused on what they're doing, uh, whatever. There were a um, hundred different excuses. Now you have to do it. You don't have a choice and companies are functioning, operations are going on, th things are happening. There are some companies that refuse to get into the digital age. They were quite happy going with brick and mortar and, you know, especially on retail, there were a lot of companies that were very happy with brick and mortar, very happy with status quo remaining. Uh, and they obviously the numbers told the story, so they didn't feel that there was a need to change or get with the times as it were. Um, so some of those companies had have really been left behind and they are playing a game of catch up. Some have caught up and, and there will be a lot of catching up that happen. 
uh, but I think a lot of people were shown up as to how technically prepared they were for a situation like this. And it had nothing to do with this happening. It had to do with how important was digitization and a technical conversion, a tech conversion in current operations for these companies. Some people still thought that the old fashioned way of working was fine and it worked for them, especially in an environment like Sri Lanka, if you were working in a, in a very Sri Lanka centric environment. But if you're looking at a global environment and you had to compete with people from or, or companies and operations from around the world, you had to start investing in tech at a very early stage. So those guys are going to be ahead for us now. If we get back to some level of normalcy, I can tell you 50% of my office, the, the office that I work at, will not be coming to work in future. They will be working from home. We will reduce our footprint in, in the office. We will reduce the number of people who have to actually turn up and they will work from home. We will have a roster system where maybe you come to work two days, three days a week. So it's a, it's a complete paradigm shift for some companies but it's a journey that some other companies have been on that just got a little fast. Now let's talk about the industry that you're in. You're obviously part of one of the biggest apparel manufacturers in the, in the country and uh, clearly uh, apparel um, export in the country brings in you know quite a lot of money. Uh, certainly don't have the numbers with us right now but obviously Not your right. clients your clients are predominantly from the US and Europe, which are heavily hit right now with this pandemic. And this at the same time is sort of, uh, you know, it, it sort of dribbles down to uh, where we are right now, not able to export our products to them. How difficult is it going to be for you to actually pick up from this point onwards in particularly we're talking about your industry? So it is going to create in, in a short term a catast catastrophic uh, kind of drop in volumes immediately. That's that, that's the, the first thing we're going to see. Mm. Um, we're hoping that that will not be a very long term thing. It'll probably be six months, eight months, maybe, you know, a little longer than that. But we're hoping there will be a curve and it'll come out of it at some point. Having said that, what it's going to do is it's going to weed out a lot of operations that we have right now that haven't been efficient, that aren't, uh, aren't cash rich because if you're looking at a six to seven month period where business is going to drop by a good 40, 50 percent, sometimes even more, it's going to be how able are companies uh, to survive this uh, from a cash point of view? Cash is going to become the most important thing here. If you have cash, if you hold cash, you're going to be able to pay, you're going to be able to you know, keep your operations going for a period of time. But because there is this massive check that's happening right now, business has pretty much fallen off a cliff. One moment you were at 100, next moment you're at 50. And what do you do? Your operations are geared for 100. So the first thing is you need to think of survival short to medium term. The next thing is you need to try and rejig your operations to be able to cope with the new norm. What is this going to be? So sadly, in some cases, it may be that some companies won't survive. And that is happening as we speak across the world. Uh, there are lots of sole proprietorships. That's all. There's a lot of daily wage earning uh, you know, kind of operations that go on, a lot of little food and beverages operations. These are just going to crumble because they won't have the ability to sustain themselves over a period of zero earnings for months to come. Uh, the bigger companies obviously are going to take strict measures of trying to save their cash. Uh, for example, I know a lot of apparel companies around Sri Lanka have started uh, slashing senior management and management salaries uh, by significant amounts to be able to save cash. Um, bonuses have been withheld, expansions have been withheld, capital expenditure has been withheld. So you're taking measures to make sure that your cash strength is maintained. Then comes the opportunities that this new world offers. So while the traditional businesses that we were doing have now come to, I wouldn't call it a grinding wall because there is still a need for some of these things. But there are lots of new opportunities opening up as well. For example, the PPE market, the, the personal protection equipment market, masks, hats, booties, uh, body suits like uh, scrub gowns. Um, there's a huge market of opening up for those things. So that may be a saving grace for some of these companies over the medium term. 
So I think it is one, first going into survival mode and making sure that you maintain and try and protect your cash as best possible. Second, try and reduce your cost of operation as far as possible. Um, and even if it means your footprint, like say, for example, if you're a plant, that, if you're a company that has 10 plants or 10 operations, uh, 10 manufacturing uh, operations, regardless of what industry, whether it's apparel or anything else, maybe you have to shut four or five down for a, um, and you don't have to shut up, get rid of your heads. You can even keep the heads going. You can pay the salaries, but shut the operation. One thing that we are very keen on doing is making sure that nobody loses their jobs at a time like this, because that would be an inhumane way of dealing with uh, uh, you know this situation. Um, but it's important that we realize that not every operation, every plant, every factory, every office can function at the levels that they were functioning before. So we have to make those very painful decisions, very painful uh, choices, and act accordingly. You know, but wherever, wherever we go, wherever we look, especially either in the news or in the newspapers or whatever, it's all dark and gloom. I mean, there is everybody is talking about the fact that we're going to have a tough couple of months. Some even obviously say it's going to be a few years for us to actually get out of it. Uh, everybody is basically putting out the numbers as to how much we're going to lose and how much it's going to impact us. Not many people have actually sat down and said, listen, OK, this is going to happen, but this is what we need to do. I mean, where how are we going to get out of this? Lump, at which point are the corporate leaders going to let the country know, okay, yes, we all know it's going to be tough. I mean, we don't need to reiterate that fact over and over again. What do we do, Sorry, What do we do? How do we get out of this? I mean, I'm talking about across the board, all industries. I'm sure there must be, you know, something that everybody or all leaders actually have to sort of look into. What do we do? How do we get out of this? I wish I had this magic wand that I could, you know, a magic <laughs> answer. And I wish I was intelligent enough to be able to figure that out. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, an average human being here. Um, Chuck, the truth is, some companies are not going to survive. You know, that's the sad truth. Yeah. There are going to be companies that are not going to survive. This, and that's it. And then, you know, I, I can't even tell you what the solution is going to be to get those companies out of uh, where they are, you know, whatever. Now, in the U.S., for example, trillions of dollars have been given, in many cases, to the wrong people, but uh, have been given as as uh, kind of a safety net. We don't have those luxuries. So, in Sri Lanka, if you're looking at some of the companies, they will not survive this. Having said that, there are lots of other opportunities also opening up in this economy. Maybe we have to start looking at, uh, you know, a different way of doing business. For example. Um, I don't want to name any companies or anything like that, but, you know, if there are traditional ways of doing business, we have to now completely relook at, okay, if that's the platform we were working on, maybe there's another opportunity somewhere else. So we have to start looking into adjacencies, into other capabilities that we have, and try and maximize our survival, um, the ability to survive over this period of time till some kind of normalcy returns and it will return. But who is going to be able to hold um, their positions and hold um, their or is going to be able to survive uh, the next six to eight months, 10 months, one year, that is going to be the critical thing. So there is no magic solution and say, say you know, this is what we need to do. I think each person needs to explore avenues of one survival, two stability, and three growth. I think there are you know three different things that we we need to be looking at. But um, one of the main things that we have to do is break away from the traditions of traditional ways of looking at this. We cannot look at traditional ways. We enjoy a lot of luxuries. We enjoy a lot of you know, uh, good, when, when, when things were good, we enjoyed a lot of good things in, in our businesses. Horses, uh, you know, DVD, this, that, all kinds of stuff. Now it's about survival. All of us need to get into that survival mindset and start looking at, okay, I have to see this through and then I will come out of it. I will either come out of it stronger or I will limp along and just kind of hang on for the ride, but I will come out. And those who cannot come out of it will fall by the wayside and there we go. Pretty much positivity is is what we're really looking at. Satira, thank you very much uh, for your message. Uh, uh, so be a minimalist, which is, of course, the solution for this. 
is one of our Facebook comments. By all means, if you've got a question for Sari, you can always post it up on our page and uh, we'll see if we can actually have him answer that, all your comments on the uh, Sit Back Show with Sarinda. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Coming back, Sari, I actually pulled out an old clip of yours. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> 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 Don't worry about it. Not those clips. Oh, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pulled one out. Uh, we're okay, going to talk I about... It's, it's, it's like a prophetic clip. It was almost 10 to 12 months ago that you made this statement. We're going to actually play that for you and then have a chat okay. right after this. Quick in, break in right here. Okay. <laughs> Quick break right here on Sit Back with Shaq. With starting the number, we're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this one. Power dressing. See, this is a very unique thing for every man who wants to be successful. If you want to grow up in life, when you go into certain level, you know, you need to have that power look. Sri Lanka's score of 338 for 6 was imposing. I really thought it was imposing. And this is what everyone expected Sri Lanka to do. One of the issues, I'm sure you understand, is that Sri Lanka could not do this in the World Cup. Look at the other games. Burglar with toy pistol injured in police shooting. A suspect who entered a finance firm in the Horana town was hospitalized when police fired at him early yesterday morning. Okay, so today on Song Stories, we're going to be talking about this great song by Bruce Springsteen. It's called Glory Days. Pod Hub, whenever, wherever. Thank you very much. Very good evening and welcome to Sit Back with Shaq right here on PodHub uh, Facebook page going live and talking to a very interesting uh, individual, Sarindo Nambua, and uh, talking about uh, the current situation. Sarindo has been, of course, uh, in the corporate industry for a very, very long time and uh, shares a lot of knowledge. Um, also sits on quite a few boards, as a matter of fact, as a director, as an advisor, and uh, as a corporate planner, so to say. Um, sorry if you're there right now, I'm just going to quickly cross over to you, and uh, we are going to uh, take a look at this uh, interview. Um, this is a clip of an interview that you gave for the uh, Snippex Planning Playbook, uh, which was back in June 2019, and uh, some very interesting thoughts that you said at that point which proves to be so true today um, here's the clip let's take a look at it and have a chat with Sarinda right after this there are some scenarios you can plan for right those are those are scenarios that you can anticipate or you can see it coming or you can you know maybe political instability uh, can be seen uh, by loud so those things you can you can start planning for but there are some things that are referred to, I think there's a good book called Black Swan that refers to this. Uh, where these are ones that hit you out of the blind. They're completely unplanned. You don't know what the hell is going to happen. You're walking down the road and a bus comes and hits you from behind. You know, that kind of stuff. So those are the things that are difficult to plan for. How do you plan? And those are game changers. Those are like, they, they change directions of businesses or countries or lives. So, like, a, like the tsunami, for example. Sri Lanka was never the same after the tsunami. It changed. Sri Lanka's course changed. So, these bombs, the war, you know, those are things that really change things. Now, that's what we're talking about, Sari. I mean, you're talking about the game changer. And that was actually, uh, you, you said that back in June 2019, when you were obviously part of the Snippex uh, planning playbook, changing the countries, changing the lives, changing the direction of businesses. That's exactly what is happening right now. How do you plan for that? You don't. You, you can't plan for it. You, you can't plan for it because you never see it coming. Nobody saw this coming. Um, nobody saw uh, the Easter bombing coming. Nobody saw the constitutional chaos there was in 2018 coming. You know, so these are events that happen with, without anybody seeing, uh, seeing it happen. Uh, and it is first, I think the first thing you need to do is uh, take stock of where you are and what the impact is going to be. 
and then and that is where i know i can see a nice comment here uh, from uh, a friend of mine uh, about survival means being creative absolutely absolutely spot on because it is about then looking at what is our new reality what is our new normal and then trying to make adjustments to the the beast that you have been running for a while um to try and adjust to this new normal and that is what is going to be very difficult for a lot of people because a lot of people are very stuck in how they work uh and how they have worked for the last 10 15 20 years and it's like you know changing to be able to adapt is uh, is not it doesn't come easy to everybody Here's another interesting question that's actually on screen right now. Sorry, you can read it. How do you think this situation will help each individual to find better version of them? So the first thing is right. If you if you look at every single one of us, we have had to deal with the reality that none of us have dealt with before. We have been locked in our houses for over a month. How many of us have taken that one month to look at ourselves, look at what we do in our in our day to day life? in our family life in our professional life our health our diet how many of us have taken that time to look at all that and try and reengineer ourselves to become a better version of who we are right we have never in our lifetime had a period where any one of us and i have lived through the 83 riots we were locked in in our houses for a period of time i've lived through the curfews of 1970s with the uh, the jvp time at that time um i've lived through a, a whole bunch of times and we were locked in but never for this duration never for this amount of uh, well you know for this duration so what have we done as individuals to make ourselves better at this time I can tell you the first two or three days, I was just an absolute wreck. Personally, I, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was worried for everybody who worked with me. I was worried for my family. I was worried for my children. I myself, I am not uh, not a young buck anymore. I'm you know I need to look at retirement. I need to look at making sure that I have enough money to be able to live a decent life after I retire. So all these fears started going through my head, and then I calmed down, and then I started looking at what can I do now that can make me prepared one, prepared for the future, and make me a better person when I when I come out of this to be able to deal. With. Um, and I don't want to go into a little you know lecture on what I've been doing, but I spend a lot of you time with my personal. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, uh, this features. <laughs> but, um, but in all seriousness, I've, there are a few things that I started doing that I have never done before. Every morning, I sit and spend at least half an hour in meditation. I have no clue how to meditate. But what I have done is I've gone on YouTube. I've with uh, uh, you know short clips, twenty minute, thirty minute clips. I put my headphones on. I sit on the balcony and I just medit- try, try to try and still my mind and meditate and calm myself down. Then I spend a little bit of time on reflection. I write some notes on you know what I would like my life to be like, what I think I can change, and I try and make some notes and just spend a little time on my own. Then I have we have enough time, right? Most of us have enough time to be able to do all this stuff. Then I spend an hour on an exercise bike that I have at home. Thankfully, I'm I'm blessed to have an exercise bike at my place. I spend an hour on that. Sweat like a pig. Feel really good. Have a shower and then I work. After that, we get on conference calls. We do that, and I feel really fresh. I feel really refreshed. Come evening, I do another workout. I've never done two workouts in my life, probably since I was I don't know nineteen twenty, and I'm feeling really good. I feel really great. But what we, what what I have been able to do is really look at myself as an individual and try and change as much as possible to be able to. Now what I am doing is trying to see how I can make this new lifestyle of mine that I have enjoyed for the last thirty days fit into going back to work. And I think I've kind of figured out how to do it. So I think we all, if we make the effort, we all can come out of this. we can come out better versions of ourselves healthier versions of ourselves no access to um, 
instant deliveries of fast food has made a massive impact to my weight as well right. as to my health. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I've managed to <laughs> shed a fair amount of kilos as a result of not having access to instant doses of hot butter cuttlefish. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, so those are the things that you look at the positives and try to do the best you can. So you got Zaytun obviously sending us a Facebook message saying companies and individuals must test their creativity and continuously learn with a progressive mindset, which is something very important also at the same time. This leads me to uh, my next question um, with leadership at a time like this, Sarinda, uh, and uh, which is, of course, crucial uh, for coming out of this slump. Yes, you can obviously have people standing wherever they are and screaming out saying, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to know, but we need that one person or we need that individual who will basically step up and say, this is what we need to do. Now, traditionally, leaders have always seen their boardroom as their domain. Uh, now, they can't go into the boardroom. They're pretty much everybody is uh, on, uh, uh, on video chats and um, trying to get through to each other. What sort of confidence does this give? I mean, do we leave the room and get on Zoom? Is that how we need to move forward from this point onwards? Not necessarily. I don't think we need to, you know, I mean, if we get back to a normal uh, work environment, I think, you know, we can we can start having face to face meetings. And it's always nice to have a face to face meeting yeah. and to be able to, you know, feel the chemistry of each other and, and, and to have a meeting like that. But I think what what we really need to do is one, we need to be decisive. And it's very difficult to be de decisive at a time when there's so much change around. It. But it doesn't matter. You have to show strong decisiveness and strong conviction about decisions that you take at the time based on the knowledge you have. If you have to change it two months, two weeks down the line or two days down the line, by all means. But start making some decisions that's going to impact your company, impact the people, show confidence to your people that you are actually acting in the best interest of them and the company. The next thing you need to do all the time is you need to be out there communicating, talking, encouraging people uh, because everybody is feeling down. Everybody is feeling like crap right now. Uh, and, you know, it's it's not uh, everybody who has the comfort of being able to you know, exercise twice, twice a day and watch their diet and all. People are starving. People are barely making an existence. So I think it's really important that we, we look at um, giving people confidence that when they come out of this, they're coming out of this something that is going to be better and, and be able to survive this. Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, uh, I, I can see a lot of comments popping up and all of them are absolutely spot on. We need to clean up. We need to take out all the wastage from our processes, from our lives. I think what this has done to all of us as individuals is to really critically look at what's important in my life. What did I think was important in my life? And some of these things just seem so trivial now. No, family, health, good food, you know, decent food, exercise, mental well-being, uh, stability, financial, you know, these things become important. But there are lots of other things that we were wasting our time on that seems so trivial now. So I really feel that these are opportunities that we have to absorb. Oh, here's a brilliant comment. Never let a crisis go to waste. Absolutely. It's all of us take this crisis to become better versions of ourselves. And I, let me draw a small example of something that we did in our office. We started a chat group on workouts. It's called Slim uh, Quest or something. <laughs> <laughs> and there are now about 75 people on this chat. And every day, everybody starts posting the workouts that they have done. They start throwing challenges out there. Wow. They start posting the big progress that they have made. And this group has just become a catalyst for so much positivity. There are times when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, ah, I don't want to get out of bed and do anything today. I just want to stay in bed. And then this chat group, I just get on and they, they are like, okay, I did my 500 sit up today or you know, I did my 5,000 skips today or whatever it is. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so I think it's really been a fantastic, there have been so many good things that have come out of this. So it's not all doom and gloom. I think there are lots of good little things that have come out of this. 
We've got tons of requ- tons of uh, messages that have actually been popping up, which is great. I mean, lots of people yeah. obviously watching us right now. Um, Shavanti, thank you. N- uh, nice to have Shavanti also watching us. The COVID-19 has brought us to a reflection point, which is so good. What are we good at doing? What do we love to do? And uh, some really good um, um, points, of course. Uh, we're going to get into all this. We're going to take a quick break and come back. Uh, we stole a tweet from your Twitter feed. Which, <laughs> which uh, we're going to get into that and we're going to dissect that tweet right after this. Quick break on Sit Back with Shaq with Sarinda. We'll be back right after this. Power dressing. See, this is a very unique thing for a demand who won't be successful. You want to grow up in life. When you go into certain level, you know, you need to have that power look. Sri Lanka's score of 338 for 6 was imposing. I really thought it was imposing. And this is what everyone expected Sri Lanka to do. One of the issues, I'm sure you understand, is that Sri Lanka could not do this in the World Cup. Look at the other games. Burglar with toy pistol injured in police shooting. A suspect who entered a finance firm in the Horana town was hospitalized when police fired at him early yesterday morning. Okay, so today on Song Stories, we're going to be talking about this great song by Bruce Springsteen. It's called Glory Days. Podhub, whenever, wherever. on the uh, pod hub facebook page live okay uh welcome back and uh, we've got a few things that we need to obviously quickly get in it's a show it's just not a video chat show of course we're trying to um uh, bring out some other stuff as far as i guess they're concerned we're talking to we'll be talking to guests in the future uh talking about trending topics in sri lanka that's one of the most important things now sorry you you're, you you tweet a lot uh and <laughs> you speak your mind out on Twitter. I see that. And oh, in dear. terms, in terms of your Instagram I speak account, mind out generally anyway. <laughs> in terms of your Instagram account, it's quite a lot of great pictures. Most of them of your dogs, which is so adorable. And I'm sure you're spending a lot of time now. You get to spend a lot of time with both of them. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. is one of the plus points of being locked down, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. here's a tweet that we actually stole from your. Feed. We're going to take a quick uh, look at that one and uh, read it at the moment. Um, large supermarket chains are failing during this crisis because they are still thinking like large supermarket chains. Think different. Keep it simple. Act local. There are thousands of farmers depending on your success. Act now. So uh, it was actually a tweet uh, that we stole from uh, your feed. Now, where do you think? the supermarkets have dropped the ball in reacting to this crisis. Now, Zari, you've got to understand the fact that this is unprecedented. What we're going through right now is unprecedented. Um, Could we safely say that the supermarkets were never expecting to be put in a situation like this? And um, is there a fine balance to this? And, you know, when you when you don't do something you're blamed for not doing but then of course when you are basically pick, picking up the pace you're also sometimes looked upon as an opportunist how do you sort of have a fine balance and where like i said earlier on did the supermarkets you think drop the ball so let's let's look at why the supermarkets are important right this is not about giving some columbus 7 lady uh, blue cheese right this is this is not about give, giving some you know somebody that chorizo sausage or something like that. This mm. is about giving people food. When we started, you have to understand now, 30 days on, it's a very different scenario. 35 days on, almost 40 days on now, very different scenario. Now, you can get anything from a pizza to a, uh, whatever it may be. You can get all this stuff that's available. Deliveries are happening quite frequently. So the need for food has now come way down the uh, the say, if you are going to do a Maslow's hierarchy, uh, you know, a pyramid, um, at the early days, that bottom most 
base of trying to find food and basic existence was of paramount importance. And at that time, hardly any of the big supermarket chains were operational because their digital platforms had failed. They had no short term solution. They had no delivery solutions and they were struggling. Look at Satosa. Right? Satosa was a laughing stock of everybody for many years. And suddenly, Satosa was up and running. What did they do? They came up with a hamper model. They didn't give people the luxury of saying, I want this shampoo and that makeup and, you know, and, and something else. They came up and said, here are the models that we have for our hampers. You have hamper number one, two, three, four, five. They came up with a delivery scheme and they started getting things out of the door as fast as possible. How fast did any of the other supermarket chains react to that? Some were making length, lengthy excuses and explanations as to why they were going to take time so that they could get a proper a digital platform operation. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. They should hang their heads in shame. At this time, what we needed was an immediate reaction to be able to get food out the door to people and to get the food out the door to people. There were thousands of people who depended on the sales that were taking place at the supermarket for their livelihood. There were farmers who were throwing their crops because there was nothing they could do with it. There were thousands of people who earned a daily wage or earned their only wage. They earned for a chunk of the uh, a year because of uh, you know rain cycles and whatever, or crops, crop cycles. Those crops were wasted because the supermarket chains didn't have the chain to be able to deliver to their consumers. So my, my anger, my frustration was at a time like that, rather than trying to come up with these beautiful digital solutions to be able to uh, deal with um, uh, giving people what they wanted, come up with a solution to get the basics out to people who were starving and, and, and farmers and producers who needed that income to be able to live over this period of time. So that was my frustration. Now most of them have got you know, various delivery partnerships and uh, acts together and digital platforms going and all that. But how long did it take? Absolute disgrace. You know, if, if any of these companies didn't have the egos and this huge mindset of, oh, yeah, we are these magnificent you know, big operations, they would have gone down and copied. They didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was copy the Satasa model and get stuff out the door. That's all they had to do. And if anybody tells me that companies of that magnitude, because the supermarket chains are owned by big companies, of that magnitude, of that size, in this country, that importance, that level of importance, economic importance, if they couldn't get their act together, that's a damn shame. They should have been able to get curfew passes. They should have been able to get delivery systems going. They should have been able to tie up with so many delivery uh, services that there are. There's Uber Eats that had no business. There are thousands of insurance salesmen who have motorcycles who were going around. Those guys could have done delivery. There were so many hundreds of people on Pikmi. How did Pikmi get their act together so far? Pikmi was a company that reacted immediately. They coupled with Satosa and started acting immediately. There are several other companies that changed platforms. They changed their existing platforms of like booking platforms, for example, into delivery platforms. They changed, they adapted to what was needed in real time. Does that boil, does that boil, yes. does that boil down to leadership, sorry? Absolutely, absolutely it does. It boils down to leadership and it boils down to people, you know, trying to getting a grasp of what reality is. Interesting. Sorry, I'm, I'm going off on a rant here. No, that's it's fine. That that, this, this is what we wanted to do. This is what we want from yeah. you. Uh, which is obviously, I mean, at the, end, at, the, at the end of the day, because there are lots of stuff that we can do to pick your brains and uh, get you out because you've been locked down for about 30 days now. Are you looking forward to yeah. getting out? No. <laughs> I think we're just going to end the conversation right now. <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've come to a, a very happy place in, uh, in this whole lockdown situation. <laughs> Clearly, there are reasons why I would like to leave and you know, run out for a few hours and come back. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, if, you know, but I, I do miss the, the freedom of being able to travel and you know, go out and see places that I enjoy being in. But, uh, uh, but I have come to terms with what this is and I am very comfortable with what it is. 
very comfortable. Well, I'm going to actually, uh, I don't know if any of you have uh, read this very interesting article that Sari wrote just a few weeks ago, a few days ago, I think, just a few days ago, Life in the Time of COVID-19. Uh, it was a few days ago that you actually wrote this one? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's a very interesting article. It's on the Medium platform, um, Reflection and Thoughts of the Medium. Now, this is, a, uh, this is something that I picked out. We're in a war. We are fighting for the survival of life as we knew it. We are fighting for the continuity of our businesses and our lifestyle and our hope and dreams. But in all this, this is the most important thing. Let's not forget to live. We will come out of this. Let's make sure that each one of us in our own little way come out of it just a little better. Now that is a quote that uh, I think lots of people have not necessarily realize the fact that we are all sitting back like you said at the beginning of the show we're all wondering what is going to happen how are things how are we going to make ends meet but we have actually forgotten to live sorry that's absolutely something, that's a code that's you know, a code that really hit home see the thing is Shaq, a lot of us whenever something happens we start to dwell on the negative you know that's fine dwell on the negative by all means but spend 25% of your time on the negatives and then start looking at, okay, what are the opportunities I have here? What are the positives in this situation? Because there is absolutely no situation in, on this planet that happens without an opportunity being created as well. In the worst of the worst situations, there's an opportunity created. So I think it's very important that every one of us looks inward first and starts to think, okay, this is how my life has been impacted by this. How am I going to become better by it? Or we can just be like, and you know, that's the that's the general thing. No, that's the whole, uh, I'm a Buddhist, and, and that's unfortunately the Buddhist way of thinking. It's my karma. Screw that. This is not about karma. <laughs> well, sorry. Uh, I gotta say thank you so much for being a part of uh, Sit Back. It was it was absolutely wonderful uh, to have you on the show, and uh, lots. I mean, I apologize because we couldn't get into all the comments that actually came in, but it's going to be up on the platform. By all means, uh, you can always uh, reply to the comments yourself. Sorry, and because there are some fantastic ideas, some fantastic comments. Like Shivanti says, yes, the article was very inspirational. This is something that you need to read if you have haven't actually read this article this came out just a couple of days ago and uh, this is I think straight after your meditation session you obviously sat down with this article I think right? because there was, there was a lot of meaning into this <laughs> yeah. meditation is a term used very loosely in my case <laughs> you're meditating right now in, aren't you <laughs> in, a chair in one place for 15 minutes is like a meditation for me <laughs> but it was an absolute treat to actually have you on the show and uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be a part of the show my and pleasure, Jack. My pleasure. Final, final few words on where to go from this point onwards before we say goodbye to you where to go is look for all the opportunities that you can find look for ways to change yourself to become better look for ways to change businesses to make uh, you know uh, to get look for opportunities uh, don't get stuck and bogged down in tradition and you know the way things have been it's a new world out there it's going to create lots of new opportunities just look for those and make the best of it we'll come out of this we'll come out of it strong we'll struggle for a while but we'll come out of it strong and uh, each one of us must have a very positive mindset that's what's important you know first take care of you take care of you make yourself feel better be healthier mentally and physically and then take care of everything around you. Families, businesses, everything around you. Good luck, guys. Stay safe, everybody. This is a tough time for all of us. Stay safe. Thank you very much, Sari. Have a good night. And Thanks, uh, hopefully Thank we'll uh, see you soon when, you get, when we drag you out of the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care. Good night. Thank you very much, guys, for being a part of the show. Sit back with Shaq and what an inspirational uh, chat that was with Sari Nunambu, a guy who's really positive, really is positive. And I, was, it was, I actually feel uh, honored to actually have him on the show. We've got another very interesting guest lined up uh, this Thursday at uh, 8.30, right here live on the PodHub page on Facebook Live. We will speak to you on Thursday at 8.30. Till then, have yourself a wonderful night. Have a great Tuesday night. Good night. We'll